Good evening, authors. Each and every one of you has a really important message to share with the world. How do I know this? It's because I published you. It's very simple. You wrote to me a query letter that compelled me so much, and I get dozens a day, it compelled me so much that I thoroughly read it, which is step number one, and then I contacted you back because your message was so interesting to me, and I decided to publish your book. So, you have this message that you want to share it with the world. How do you get it out there so that people actually read it? You did the first step, you wrote a book. Then the second step, you found a publisher who was willing to publish you. And now the third step, getting other people to read your book. How do you do that? Any ideas? It's a really hard question, and it's one that we all struggle with. As your publisher, it is my goal to get as many people to know about your book, primarily because I believe in your message so much that I want the world to know it. Secondly, we need to make money so that we can make more books, so that we can get your message to the world, so that more people know about it. It's cyclical. How do you do that? It's a little overwhelming. The fact is, we usually get rejected over and over again. In fact, it takes seven times of someone hearing your name or your book or something about you before they will even consider buying your book. So every single time you go out there and you're told no, 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 or just ignored, that's a good thing because that's one time closer to when the answer is yes. And when you get that yes at time number eight or later, that person will be so excited that they will go out and share your book with everyone they know. And then you'll see a big, huge boost in sales. It's a little overwhelming, and that's why with the things that I found out in publishing, of what actually works and what doesn't work, I've come up with my own idea. It's called SCORE. These are five simple techniques. You can pass. Oops. Five simple techniques that will allow you to do marketing in the way that best serves you an author. S is for social. Your authors, your introverts, every single one of you at one time or another, with I think one exception, has told me outright, I'm an introvert. I can't do any of that social stuff. I can't possibly. Well, guess what? You have to. Today's market is completely different than what it used to be. You need to be social. What this means is not that you go and talk about yourself constantly, but that you have an online presence. And I'm only asking for 10 minutes a week, which is trivial. At a minimum, you need a website. That's bare minimum. And you need to put new content on it at least once a week or every other week. Then attached to that, you need a Facebook fan page. Almost all of you have told me that there's no way you'll ever have a personal page on Facebook. Fine, you don't have to have a personal account, but you do need a fan page. You don't ever have to write on it, but it has to be connected to your blog. You also need an Amazon author page, and you need a Twitter account. And all of these can be interconnected. And if you're really excited about social media, you can also do Google Plus or author pages or Squidoo or Goodreads or anything else that's out there. Feel free to do as many as you want, but you don't have to actually be social on all of them. You just have to be social on one and have it automatically trickle out to all of the others without you lifting a finger. It takes about an hour to set all that up and it's done forever. The second part of SCORE is C for celebrities. celebrities. Yes. Okay. We all have at least one celebrity who we really admire. We probably admire them because 
their message is our message, which kind of means that our message is their message. So why aren't we communicating? We should. If you contact a celebrity and tell them about your book and your message and what you're trying to do to help the world, they might listen. And not only that, but we could get an endorsement or something that we could write on the, a blurb on the front cover of your book. Or they could just tell their Facebook fans. And who knows what could happen. Last year, Dr. Laura Conover, author of two of our books, <laughs> From the Ground Up and Together We Sleep, she contacted Maya Bialik from The Big Bang Theory and told her about Together We Sleep. She was so excited about the book, she told all of her fans on Facebook and sales soared. But better than that, they've stayed soaring and thousands of people now know that message, which was the real goal, to get that message out there. Our most recent <coughs> book, What No Sushi by Alana Terry, is about a Japanese internment camp from World War II which is the exact message that George Takei is trying to give the world right now, telling people, informing them about the Japanese-American internment camp <coughs> in World War II. Our message is his message, his message is ours. So what are we doing? We're contacting his publicist, we're writing him weekly, we're sending him the book, and digitally, and in physical, every single form we possibly can. And the great thing is, when he tells his fans, our, the author, Alana, is actually donating one dollar for every single book to the Topaz Relocation Center Museum in order to help promote what the Japanese American internment camp was like. It's absolutely amazing. That brings me to O, which is out of the ordinary. Every author out there has the dream of setting up this cute little table with a stack of books and sitting behind it, ready to do a book signing, and barely talking to the people who come up. Just put your name, sign it, here you go. Well, guess what? We can't do that anymore. You can do the book signing. In fact, do do the book signing. But don't just sit there with a pen and a book. Do something out of the ordinary. For me and my Write on Time books, I sit there with a bunch of compasses and I give them to every child or adult who walks by. Do I expect them to buy the book? Absolutely not. In fact, they 99% won't, but that's okay. What we have instead is relationship, and I give them a compass, they give me their email address, which is really important to build that base so that we can send our newsletters to, which we should be doing at least monthly, and share yourself. Talk about your adventures. Talk about your life. Why did you write the book? That's what people care about. They hear your passion and they want your book. A lot. Alana recently had a book signing where she set up a sushi display, an actual demonstration of how to make sushi, which I wish I were there because it would be really, really cool. Do something out of the ordinary because then you'll get noticed. Which brings me to R, which is the biggest thing I think all of you have said after I'll never have a Facebook account, it's I will never speak to a reporter. Because reporters, you know them, they're always just exaggerating what you say, twisting your words, making you say things that you didn't actually say. First, I recommend that all of you join Toastmasters. The reason being is that we all need to, especially as authors who work in the written word, we need to learn how to communicate with other people in concise language without the ums and the ahs and we want to make it super cool awesome because it is. <laughs> we want to talk to a reporter in either a 10 second blurb that can be quoted precisely or a 20 second video capture that can be put on the news precisely, or even a two-minute elevator pitch for someone who wants to know more because they want to bring you in for something really important. For example, my daughter, Zoe, 
she was willing to put herself out there and she got on the front cover of USA Today and that not only was on the front cover of USA Today but it spread globally and she ended up being on we lost count at several hundred newspaper covers because it was that many translated into that many languages wow. Laura Conover she put herself out there and she's now the star in a new movie that's coming out later this year which features her book from the ground up I put myself out there as an author and I was contacted to be on the Today Show all you have to do is put yourself out there that's also why you should join Toastmasters so that you don't sound like an idiot when you are being <laughs> talked with which brings me to E you'd be doing all these others if it weren't so overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's hard. It's so overwhelming, you probably want to just go write another book and forget that marketing exists. That's why I say make it easy. When you make it easy, then you never have to think about it again. And not only should it be easy, but it should be fun. It should all be automated. Pick your social media of choice and do it for about 10 minutes a week, more if you want, less if you really have to by just throwing up a picture or something. Talk about something that doesn't have to be book related, in fact it shouldn't be book related because your fans want to know who you are, not what your book is, and make it easy. But then you also always, always, always put a link to your book at the bottom. Super easy. Your fans want to know more about you and they also want to, after a while, they want to buy your book, but they'll never buy it if they don't know it exists. One of you has a month, a, a weekly mailing that you send out to over 20,000 readers every single week, and not one time have you ever put the link to your book in your newsletter, and it's driving me nuts as your publisher, because your sales are and they're going to continue to be that unless you tell your loyal fans who send you fan letters that your book exists so tell people that you exist make it easy automate it so if you're anything like me you're probably going yes Lisa I've done these things already I'm not an idiot I've read how to market been told no and then no and then no and then no and I'm a little overwhelmed with all those no's and when I'm not being told no I'm ignored flat out people walk past me as if I am diseased or something that's why we're going to do a little interaction right now each of you is going to, is, you're sitting next to multiple people you are going to spend one minute trying to sell your book based off of the front cover and the back cover you're going to sell it you're going to try to the person right next to you if you don't have a book ask for one from Zoe <laughs> and the person right next to you is going to tell you no for that full minute they're going to not only just tell you no but they're going to tell you no for really weird reasons over and over again and then after one minute you're going to switch roles and the opposite person is going to sell, and the opposite person is going to say no. And then you're going to tell me the most outlandish no's that you've got. Are you ready? Yes? yes. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Zoe will time. One minute, please. Okay, well, I have this really wonderful book here. It's about um, discovering all the states with some India and Aiden. And uh, I can hardly put it down. I mean, it's, it's just so fascinating. Look at these. It's got these big parentheses to read. It's so interesting, too. Uh, a lot of creative work went into putting this book together. Would you like to buy it? No, no. Oh, good. What? I've been to Utah. It helps you. It's so boring. Really? Yeah. It's got nice pictures in it. Nice color. Uh, black and white pictures. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. So that, that is incredible. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a
Is that even yeah. But aren't you interested in, in the history of Arizona? In um, geological specimen. Like the mineralogy, the animals, the, the plants that we have here. Isn't that a good Hey, term? one minute, please switch roles. <laughs> so, hi, I'm in the field. Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. my name is Rachel. It's a great uh, It really talks about two friends. Uh, the team up in Arizona. Things get busy fast. And then they go to the fossil plan for a birthday. And getting, getting ready for Halloween. Uh, it's really great. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you will be crying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I see a lot more laughing going on than I expected. <laughs> None of you look downtrodden at downtrodden at all, which is good. <laughs> Did you get any weird nose? Yeah. Yes. Would you like to share? <laughs> he was saying. Well, that's my nose. <laughs> he was really selling that. Mm-hmm. And so why did you say no? Well, he didn't do a good job of selling <laughs> <laughs> Well, I said no to her because yeah. I live in Arizona and I've been to Utah. Right, right, right. But it looked to me like you all did a really good job because you were told no, but then you went on to establish a relationship with the person. So you found out why they said no and you let it roll off of you and you just kept talking and communicating without any sort of hard pressure, just a nice, gentle conversation about what you think your book is about. Did anyone want to share anything else? Yes? No? She said my picture looked like a third grade. Third grade. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly the age of who was supposed to have drawn it. Really? So you should have said thank you. That is a compliment. That is exactly what we are going for. Yes. So I say kudos on that illustrator. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. You've just been told no one time quite forcefully, and that means that you are six, well, one, only six more no's to go, and you'll get that yes. I hope that you've actually collected the email address from every person who said no to you so that you can have them sign up for your newsletter so that you can tell them about all the happenings going on. And if they say no to that, then they're not your market, and that's fine, but you can still be nice to them. You can still give them a bookmark. In fact, you should. Pass out your bookmarks, your business cards, make sure you have flyers available, a magnet on your the car, your car door, anything you can think of, because we're trying to be all of these things. We want to be social, find a celebrity who can endorse us, do something out of the ordinary. Be willing to speak to reporters so that our message, not our books, because our books are, according to most people, a dime a dozen. They're not literally a dime a dozen, but that's what people think. The market is different than it used to be. It's not the same as it was 20 years ago or even 10 years ago where we could put, just publish a book, have it on a bookstore shelf, and people would buy it because it existed. It's different. In fact, bookstores don't even matter. Books are everywhere. That's why every Do Life Right book is in every form imaginable. Audio, in a physical paperback, in digital versions. Because people buy books in different ways. And the goal isn't to sell that paper. It's to sell your message, your idea. And I believe in you. That's why I signed you all on. I believe wholeheartedly in your message. And I will help you with any reporter that you have, and I will also help you make it easy. 
because your message is my message and our goal is to inspire the entire world. Thank you all very much.